Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. Thanks for letting me join the meeting. You're late. Yeah, but I just found out about it. No bat sass. Okay, it's no big deal. Toby, you said you lost your favorite mix? Yeah, it's all gone. I lost all my cosmic brownies. My favorite snack was stolen right out of the box. And my Spongebob Season 2 DVD was stolen. You had another DVD stolen? Yep. How'd you know it was gone this time? Well, it all started this morning. After I woke up, I put some clothes on, and then I sat down at my desk and said, Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. I was just wondering if it was possible for a threat to be so serious that people would have to push their town from one place to another. But then I realized that something like that can't happen. Only people as evil as Vlad the Impaler could impose a threat like that. And he's dead. Sandy Swindrop and the Worm is the episode where an Alaskan bullworm invades Bikini Bottom and Sandy tries to go after it to get her tail back despite Spongebob's worries. Like Squid on Strike, this episode aired on October 12, 2001 and is the last episode produced for Season 2. Despite this, Season 3 had already aired with episodes 86, The Bully, and 85, Just One Bite, on October 5, 2001. And even though this was the last episode of Season 2 produced, the season still aired throughout 2002, and the final episode to air for this season was episode 66, Gary Takes a Bath, which wouldn't air on Nickelodeon USA until July 26, 2003, almost two years after this episode. And both of these will unfortunately become a trend in the future, the season finale not being the last episode to air, and another season starting before the previous season ended. But that has nothing to do with the quality of the episode itself. This episode is well known for the Alaskan Bullworm, one of the many times the entire city of Bikini Bottom was destroyed, and even takes advantage of Sandy's Season 2 design. What I mean by that is, starting in Season 2, Sandy's tail was outside her suit, and in Season 1, her tail was inside it. And of course, since the Worm is a classic one-off character, and the modern seasons are obsessed with referencing the older characters and episodes, an Alaskan Bullworm would later reappear in episodes 441, My Lake from season 11, and 510, A Place for Pets from season 13. At least in episodes, video games are a different topic, but I've meandered enough. Season 2 has been a great season, so let's actually watch this episode and see how season 2 ends. So the episode starts up and it's nighttime in Bikini Bottom. The peaceful night is interrupted by something from the underground eating various things. Swandog's house was soon attacked too. It ate various things in Swandog's room and when Swandog finally woke up, he saw what had destroyed part of his house. The next day at the Krusty Krab, he told several people in Bikini Bottom that what attacked him was an Alaskan bullworm. Everybody was saying which of their belongings had been eaten too, and they were trying to figure out what they could do to protect themselves. How long does this story go on for? Probably less than 15 minutes. Everybody gave useless ideas until Patrick suggesting pushing Bikini Bottom somewhere out of harm's way, only for Squidward to shoot it down. Fred suggested getting somebody to go after the worm, but where could somebody like that be found? A frail fish in a raincoat got everybody's attention and asked for the bathroom. Oh, that is a relief. Sandy spoke up and offered to go after the worm herself. She says that the worm made it personal by eating her tail at some point when she wasn't looking, so she was going to get it back. Everybody cheered, but Spongebob was worried because of how big the worm was. Sandy wasn't too worried and ran out of the Krusty Krab with Spongebob following suit. As soon as they leave, the rest of the town decide to go with Patrick's idea and push Bikini Bottom away. Spongebob catches up to Sandy and tells her that the worm is big, scary, and pink. Yeah, so is a pig's ass, but I live nowhere near a pig. Spongebob claims that he has Sandy's tail in his pocket, but it was nothing more than a paper clip and a piece of string. Spongebob broke down and begged Sandy not to go, but Sandy still refused to listen and said nothing would stop her. Some things slowed her down, but all of Spongebob's attempts to convince Sandy to stay away did not work at all, even making Sandy go through Spongebob. He begged her again because he thought that she would get eaten. Sandy said that she can take care of herself because she's the strongest resident in town and always say Spongebob's ass because it's actually Sandy's property. What reason does Sandy need square pants for? Sandy says that she can catch any creature, no matter how big or ornery, 
and cuts SpongeBob off whenever he tries to say something else. Soon enough, they reach the worm. Sandy thinks that the worm is inside some kind of cave and went inside to find it. When she thinks she found it, she starts to beat the shit out of it, but didn't listen to what SpongeBob tried to tell her. After the fight, Sandy stated that she found her tail, but SpongeBob revealed that what she was beating up was the worm's tongue, and the cave was the worm all along. Alright, is that it? Nope. Once Sandy realizes this, they start to run away, and the worm starts to chase after them. Even while running for their lives, Spongebob made Sandy admit that she was wrong, even threatening to trip her. And I'm still trying to run on one leg the way Spongebob does. Sandy admits she was wrong, and then they remember what they were doing and try to run faster. But the worm catches up to them every time. Then Sandy gets an idea and uses Spongebob's paperclip and string as a lasso to dodge the worm's mouth. They ride on top of the worm until it falls off a cliff and they run uphill and jump off the worm right at its tail end. They go off to tell everybody that they saved the town, only for the Bikini Bottomites to have moved that city to that very ravine. The worm fell on top of it, destroying it, laying there in pain, and the episode ends. Wow, the town destroyed. What a way to end the season. So that was Sandy, Spongebob, and the Worm. And oh boy, that is such a great episode. This was always a standout episode for me as a kid. One of my favorite episodes to watch on home media. And I have a lot of fond memories of this episode as a result. I couldn't tell you how many times I wanted to talk about this episode in particular to my friends, no matter what grade I was in. While some episodes they didn't want to talk about, this episode they didn't mind when I said something about it. I always loved the art cards that appeared whenever Spongebob said Alaskan Bullworm or Big Scary and Pink. I love how the words were stylized in a way to represent whatever word appeared on screen. Patrick is absolutely golden in this episode. The way he yelled, PUSH, was always hilarious to me. I love where he dumped all the food in his mouth, even the containers, and his suggestion of pushing Bikini Bottom. I also love Mr. Krabs here too. I love when he wants everybody to buy a Krabby Patty and then they pelt him with ketchup and mustard bottles. You could say when he foams at the mouth and says he would rather the worm show up right now was being a little too mean, but I disagree. Everybody was stressed out about the worm, and Mr. Krabs is quick to rush to any kind of bad action, and he does apologize and feel bad about his outburst, so his actions here are passable in my opinion. There's not much to say about Squidward, but he's still great in this episode. He also wasn't shown getting hurt on screen. Unlike episode 558, Squidbird from season 13, so that's another positive right there. All the other fish in town are great too. I love when they say what was eaten by the worm, their ridiculous suggestions to protect themselves from the worm, and when they cheer for Sandy but immediately decide to do Patrick's plan after she and Spongebob leave the Krusty Krab. And of course, Spongebob and Sandy. They are both awesome in this episode, as they should be since their names are in the title. My favorite parts where Spongebob tries to stop Sandy are when she goes through Spongebob like a gate and the Blargan, but devil know him line that admittedly slows Sandy down. The part where Spongebob is shaped like a U is out of nowhere, but I love it. I also like the gag with the ship and when this is revealed. I also like how both characters have a motive and both are right and wrong in their own ways. Sandy's motive is to get her tail back, and considering that's part of her body, it's totally understandable why she needs it back. But it was also wrong of her to ignore Spongebob's warnings about how big the worm is. Spongebob wants Sandy to be safe and not die from the worm, and it's fair that he would be so worried about her. But at the same time, Sandy does need her tail back, and Spongebob is indirectly trying to stop her from getting it back. But nobody thinks of it that way. And Spongebob was right about the worm being too big for Sandy, but it's also wrong to threaten her while they're running for their lives. Spongebob and Sandy are both dynamic in this episode, and I love the character arcs they both have. But Sandy definitely has a bigger arc in this episode in my opinion. I also love how the tension is built up in this episode. The beginning of the episode shows that the worm is already massive, and the way it attacks so many people in Bikini Bottom shows that something has to be done. Sandy volunteers to take care of the worm issue, completely unaware of how much of a threat the worm truly is. Spongebob is the only one who's seen how big the worm is, which is also why he's the only character who tries to stop Sandy from getting hurt from the worm. 
All his constant attempts to stop Sandy show that the worm won't be as easy to take on as she thinks it will be. And when they finally make it to the worm, Sandy thinks she defeated it, only to be proven wrong. They then start running away from the worm, and it becomes a matter of staying alive at that point. And when they dodge his mouth, the worm falls into a ravine, and they have to escape from falling to their deaths. And they do. The town wasn't so lucky though. The buildup is brilliantly executed in my opinion, and I will also admit that I didn't see the big worm reveal coming as a kid. That twist is done well too. So I did say the worm was pink, but it was then revealed to be white. I didn't think much of that, but for those who did, Spongebob saw the worm for the first time at night, so it was probably hard to make out the color clearly. The chase scene is also super entertaining to watch. The animation is so well done, I love the banter between Spongebob and Sandy throughout the whole scene, and it's so humorous that Spongebob made a necklace while they were running for their lives. This is nothing short of an amazing episode. I just love everything this episode does. The build up, the banter, the character moments, the hilarious scenes with the bikini bottomites, it's so awesome. It's something that is done best with a show like Spongebob. With how big the worm is and how small everybody in Bikini Bottom is, the only way somebody could be scared of an Alaskan Bulldog in real life is if that dog is Marley from Marley and Me. The worm has such a striking appearance and left quite an impact on everybody who watched this as a kid. While in the grand scheme of things, the order in which the episodes air doesn't matter too much, I like that this was the last episode produced. Such a memorable way to end off the season. Definitely a better finale than Gary takes a bath, that's for sure. Sandy Swindove and the Worm is such a great episode. One of the most impactful episodes of the season. Hell, maybe even the whole series. And it succeeded at everything it set out to do. The build up, the chase scene, the funny parts, everything. I don't even think there's anything to actually dislike about it. That's how well it pulled everything off in my opinion. What a great way to end the season. Which also means I've covered everything in season two. Wow. Now I had a dream back in 2020, but that dream has become a recurring dream, and now there's a continuation to that dream. Yep. And now's a good time this year to make that part of the dream come true. What? Oh no, don't tell me. Oh, come on, not again. No. 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 Why does this keep happening to me? Hey man. Hey dude, I got a problem. Can't wait, I got a problem too. What happened to you? I had my favorite mix stolen. Really? I got something stolen too. Really? Yeah. Well, I'm having a meeting with a couple other people who also got things stolen. You can join that. Okay, sounds good. When's the meeting? Good, cause it's happening right now. Oh shit. And then I came down here. Well, that's the story. So, does anybody know who stole everything? Not me. Me neither. Well, I might have an idea. Who? Well, I was looking at the security footage from the moment my mix was stolen, and it didn't seem like a human. What? Well, it kind of looked like a giant monkey. A monkey? Yeah, I looked it up online and it says it's something called a masked monkey. Masked monkey? Yeah, according to this page I found, there's a creature called a masked monkey. Once every 80 years, it awakens from a slumber lasting that long at the edge of a forest right by the kid's baseball field. And whenever it wakes up, it goes around the nearby neighborhoods looking for unlocked doors and it comes in to steal food. What? That's what it says. So that's why you lock your doors at night. Toby. Anything else interesting about this masked monkey? Uh, yeah. It actually resembles a gorilla more than a monkey, which is why it wears a mask. 
Okay, well, send me the link. What are you gonna do? I'm going after that masked monkey to get back what's mine. But you said you keep the discs separate from the cases. Yeah, but I still need the cases themselves. What's that sound? Bill, what are you doing here? You can't go after that giant monkey. Why not? Because giant monkeys are dangerous. How did you know we were here? Don't worry about that. You don't want to get hurt. Yeah, but Toby said the monkey sleeps for 80 years at a time, so I could probably just get what I need and get out of there before he wakes up. Well, at least let me help you. Fine with me. Let's go. See you guys. Wish us luck. Good, Good luck. luck. Let's go. So, what now? Well, our food was stolen, so we might as well go get more. Good idea. Later. I still don't think this is a good idea. I'm not saying it is, but I still need to get back what was taken from me. Why don't you just call the police and get it back? Because one time I called them to ask what a power trip is like, and now I got blacklisted. Fair enough. My uncle's a teacher, and he gave a kid detention when he asked a similar question. Man, authority figures can be ridiculous sometimes. No kidding. Hey Mikey, I think I found it. Yeah, that's it. Yes, I got it. I got it! Uh, dude, turn around. Why? Oh my god! Oh! Okay, we can't keep running forever. What else did that article say? Right. I'm looking. Um, okay, it says the only known weakness is locked doors, which is why it only goes inside houses with unlocked doors. Really? That's what it says. Well, this should be easier than I thought. What's the plan? Uh, probably run. More running later. I think he's gone. We did it! Oof, that was a relief. But I gotta go. Okay, thanks again for the help. No problem. Well, I'm gonna go tell the others. Hey guys, we got my... Oh, they must have left. They probably went to go get more food after theirs got stolen. Oh well. Wow, 
wow, that was quite an adventure. But I got my DVD back, so that's what matters. And I also learned why you should lock your doors at night. Now as I was saying, Sandy's Spongebob and the Worm is such a great episode. But even more importantly, I've covered every episode from season two. So that means I get to finally fulfill the continuation of the dream I mentioned. That's it. Well, now that I've talked about everything from the first two seasons, now I get to kick back and relax because there's only 11 whole seasons worth of episodes to go over now. Wait. Oh man.